Shadow has been drafted, lads. Well, Merry Christmas from Dino Days. It's been a it's been a good year, and we thought we'd make a video and, and talk to you guys about what we've been doing. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, this is Jensen, this is Rich, this is Keith, and I'm Danny. Lads, how have we got on this year? Well, all right, I think over overall, uh, I think probably best to start with the paint shop, really, ain't it? I yeah, the paint shop has been busy this year. So, uh, paint shops in its second year or completed our second year wouldn't believe that already the uh, two years. <laughs> i know come february the lease is up which is great because that'll be a rent increase or we just move <laughs> out or we, or we get out, <laughs> yeah. get out. <laughs> or we get out whichever it is yeah um yeah so done our second year basically with the paint shop i'm, I'm really proud of the paint shop this year we've uh, we pulled it out of the bag i think the first year we spent six months of the year which we talked about in last year's video uh, getting the business up, getting it running, uh, you know, dealing with the side of business and getting it up and running. But now we've had a good 12 months. It's been yeah. in, the, the, the whole business has been working, uh, we've been getting working, and it's had a true true 12 months of a, a workshop, basically, without, you know, problems or having to sort issues Oh, there's, de there's definitely been things to learn during that 12 months. Of course, we've definitely learned things, I think, um, as to running a paint shop. Uh, but I don't think that learning curve will stop. It never does. It doesn't stop it. No. We've, we've done this now for you know twelve years as regards Donna days, sure, and sure. we still, at the end of every year, sit down me and Dan and say, right, okay, well, what happened this year? Right, okay, that's an amendment to this or an amendment to that that we need to do. Or how can we move forward? How can we move better? Yeah, how can we move forward? How can we move better? So. Uh, business, if, if it sits still, then it becomes stagnant. And yeah. We don't ever do that. We always look to progress and make it better. Um, I think liquid wraps have done really well this year. Cool, um, blimey, yeah, some liquid wraps have gone through there. Yeah, we've they? really put some through. It's been our, I would say, our best selling product in there. Yeah. Um, what was your favourite liquid wrap of the year? Uh, I think we've got to say Modfixes FM. Oh, Modfixes was gorgeous, wasn't the, it? The, yeah, the, I think that made that a real special yeah. car. Yeah. I think the Candy Red. Toyota Super is close second, I think. I thought the transformation but, of that Colt Rally art from yeah. just the boring red to candy red, yeah. that that was stunning. There's been so many of them though, hasn't there? All sort of, like the Leon. Good loads. Yeah, the, Le the, the Leon, Leon is, is, a, really is nice. along the same lines yeah. as well, ain't it? They all look stunning after it. Well, everything that comes out of the paint shop looks stunning, but I think, like you say, mod fixes, that just made something really special. Yeah, it took it? a red FN2, which is just a red FN2, which is going to be a sea of red FN2s, even if it was well, mega that's the, clean. that's the big difference, ain't it? Yeah, in it's, a, it's a... It's, yeah, if you went to a show and there's 15 yeah. others, even if it was a mint red one, it's still another red mm -hmm. one. Whereas at mod fixes, to the next level for me, it just completely made it stand out. Yeah, even totally seeing agree. the car last Saturday at our end of year meet, instantly as soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh, that looks nice. Yeah. You know, straight thanks, away. Thanks, guys. Whoever did attend our uh, end of year meet, we appreciate it. We had a nice time. We got so many mint spies, we still haven't got through them yet, have we? Yeah, we haven't got through them all, no. But yeah, liquid wraps, the uh, mod fixes, I think, yeah, that's gorgeous, ain't it? That was the best year. But you've painted some beautiful cars as well. I say it's hard to, when, when you look back through yeah, what uh, we've done what throughout the year, done, you think, wow. When we did the white super, that was a massive job, that was bare metal, plus some good repairs, yeah. and then uh, and then do that's probably my, our biggest job of the year for technical, me. Technical. Right. Our best technical job of the year, our best achievement, I won't say necessarily best achievement, but certainly our biggest achievement of the yeah, year. Yeah, because that's like the fav probably the favourite paint, yeah. repaint, ain't it? Yeah. Because that's a different to uh, applying a spray wrap to one, ain't it? Completely mm -hmm. different. Because uh, obviously you can have your, your favourite spray wrap, but you, 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 your, paint. your paint is a different... Yeah, that was my favourite one, one of paint yeah. for me, because... I I like liquid wrap, don't get me wrong, and if it's something like a, a temporary car for me, I would use that. I have a problem where I don't sell cars, so I would always look at putting paint on a car because I want longevity, yeah. like ultimate longevity from it. So the paintwork side on the Super for me just added complete value to that was car. Was the blue DC5 the year before? Yes. Yeah, it was. Because yeah. that's still, I mean, I mean, I know we're talking about this year, but I, re I really love the blue DC5. It's hard to try and remember what you everybody actually had a, Everyone had a bit of input on that car. Uh, yeah, because we painted it and then we modified it yeah. and then we mapped it. It was like the full shape. But we get that. So that's one of the beauties of Dino Days. And I've had this conversation recently that if you dropped your car off here, we can paint it, we can build it, we can map it. You know, there's 
There's not many places that can be proud enough to say that. No, I think for us, I think that we can. It's a, a one-stop shop now for us. I feel that we can take a job from, uh, you know, for example. I mean, it's something that we've we've not touched on. We'll touch on it later um, in this video. But um, you know, we take a car from a, a rusty shell to then doing all the bodywork to painting it. Um, you know, to then doing an engine conversion. Yeah. So giving it to an end product that that vehicle's not left here for. Yeah. And there's not many companies right now that can say that. There are a lot of people out there that can do all different For things. example, do a K20 swap cheaper than us. Yeah. But, okay, but it looks cheaper. The engine's just been thrown in the engine bay. The engine bay is a mess. The the, the wiring's a mess. The, the engine's just come out of an EP3 and been thrown in. If cheap's what you want, then someone can give you cheap, always. And that applies to anything, whether you're a builder, a painter, sure. a mechanic, whatever it is. You can always pay cheap and you'll get cheap. But you, but what what you're saying is, as as a whole, we could take something from a rusty rusty bucket to a show winner. Yeah, exactly. And what I want, something I want to do for next year it's not is best call it a rusty bucket. Yeah. <laughs> what I uh, rusty sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like to do for next year for us is take this business to the next level in that respect. There are companies um, which we all watch, you know, on YouTube and and the likes of that do. Um, work I'm, I'm not going to say i want to turn it into a restoration shop because that's not what i necessarily want and some of the shops which i watch are restoration shops mm. but they do some work and they charge some money oh, yeah. for that work they sure do and as far as i'm concerned we do as equally a good a job as what they're doing mm. and we're not we're not charging that level of money so there should be always work for us when all said and done oh, you know yeah, and, totally and whatever totally. I think we touched on us moving forward uh, as a business. So um, we've we've done EP3s, we've done FN2s, we've done every Civic there is to do uh, recently. Something that we've not really touched on so far is the FK2 and the FK8. Yeah, that's a natural progression, isn't um, it? So that's a natural progression for us. Something that me and Dan have both talked about, um, even recently in the last couple of weeks, is to look for an FK2. Uh, be it damaged or otherwise, um, and then we can make a series having of videos the, on having it. Having the paint shop, you'd love to see sense. one in the paint shop, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd love to see that's one what me and Richard are sort of talking about. We buy one, and, and, and realistically, no word of a lie, we're looking for the cheapest one we can mm. find. Yeah, because we are going to put our stamp on it. Yeah. So whether we get it, we, we get it painted up and back to pristine, and then we start modifying it, seeing what modif modifications work. Uh, looking well, at the we're, looking, we're looking, like you say, really, is it looking at first of all, buy one as cheap as we can, so it's probably going to be damaged. Obviously, repair it, that'll make a series of videos. Then, obviously, we'll move on to modification packages and mapping and so on and so forth. So, natural progression You're for the business. To document everything better, isn't we? Yeah, we definitely want to document everything better. So, what we've talked about is obviously better camera equipment, uh, microphones, oh, absolutely, so yeah. on and so forth. That's something else that we're going to do next year. The YouTube channel's gone from strength to strength. We originally said we got one in ten thousand for last yeah, Christmas. Yeah, if you watch if you watch last Christmas video at this stage, we were we were hoping for ten thousand, weren't we? Yeah, we were hoping for ten thousand, and then we've uh, we were again this year hoping for sort of twenty. That's what our goal was to double up, and we've sort of doubled the door basically. Yeah, we we're got... at forty two thousand ish at yeah. this point. In so time. it proves that we've done something right. Yeah, if nothing else, and. Uh, now at the point that we're we're heading towards that fifty thousand subscriber mark, I feel that we have still got so much to offer as regards video content. We don't we don't cover everything that we do here. I'd say we probably have only covered this year maybe ten or fifteen percent of what we've actually done. That's right, yeah. And uh, the the goal for next year is to get that hot, get that a lot higher yeah. and have a better quality of work there for sure. Yeah, I think so. And with better equipment. You know, we know you guys at home watch this channel, so we're going to try and offer you something better by upping our quality, um, by getting better camera equipment, microphones, lighting. We're going to do our absolute best to improve the YouTube channel. Yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely improve that. Also, step our game up on the on the car front as well. Like I say, moving on to the FK2 and the FK8, um, that brings us a whole new customer stream in. Yeah. You know, so for both sides, because we already offer so many parts for the FK8, we already so sell so many parts for the FK2 that it makes sense to be bolted on and getting you guys real data about what parts work well on these cars. You've seen it with the FN2, we've done things like comparing RRC inlet manifolds to M2 inlet manifolds, uh, induction kits, comparing exhaust. You know, we've got. We've, we've mapped and we've tuned so many FN2s now that we can tell you off the top of our heads what are the best mods to have for that car 
Um, and we've got data to back that up. So I think that's what we want to do with the FK2, isn't it? See what's going to make power. Yeah, for sure. I think it's, it's the natural progression for the business, isn't it? And we want to remain Honda. We love Hondas and, and that's our core business. You can't be the master of everything. Uh, you know, I know people a lot of the time tune different things and do different things. I think we've got a good knit with the Honda community and to move move forward onto those cars is the natural progression for that. Um, I'd definitely like to definitely see some FK2s in here next year. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, just move forward. I think project wise for us, now the paint shop's obviously settling down and we've had two years of building that up and getting that sort of where we want it. Um, I think I'd like to see some more liquid wraps in there next year. I'd definitely like to see some more uh, bigger paint shop projects going through sure. there as well. We've got one lined up early for next year, which is nice. So obviously we'll see that go through early in the, in the new year. Um, that's going to be one to watch for us. I think yeah. we're going to make a video series on that. Um, for those that don't know, it's a Civic EK that we're going to do an FN2 full conversion on, uh, very much similar to the white one that we did a few weeks ago. Is that the rusty bucket you were referring to? It was the rusty bucket. Yeah, <laughs> so unfortunately, we we paid 200 quid for the shell, and when you imagine uh, you pay 200 pounds for something, you don't get a lot for 200 pounds. What we got was a lot of rust. Yeah, um, you get a whole load of oxidisation. Yeah, you get a whole lot of oxidisation. But the good thing is it's light, it's lighter than carbon fibre, so I'm told. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit... To be fair, we've been pushing very, very hard over the last couple of Gone weeks. Gone through but, some wire wheels, haven't we? Yeah. We were very, <laughs> Keith got stabbed by one in the arm at one point. He was like, oh, something's in my arm. And like, it's like half inch into his arm as he pulls it out. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we've been working exceptionally hard between uh, the three of us on that side in there. Um, Keith's been a little bit quiet on the rundown to Christmas, which we always expect. The workshops, again, it's also been a little bit quiet on the rundown to Christmas. So in the last two weeks, we've pushed so hard to get as much done as we can. I've managed to weld all of the back corner. I've done the two front jacket points. I've done the two front flitch panels. I've done the. He's talking directly to Honda owners now. Yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, I've done the two turret top extension. Everyone at home's like. Yeah. We have, <laughs> between me and Keith, over the last week, we have swapped a sunroof to a tin top roof. Uh, that's going to be the first video in the video series going live. Um, and then I think pretty much where we are now, we mounted the radiator yesterday, we deleted the aerial hole. Um, I think we're pretty much, apart from mounting the fly-by-wire accelerator pedal, which obviously we've got to make brackets for to the bulkhead, so I want to weld that on before obviously the engine bay gets painted in case it burns through. We've literally got one corner of the car, the passenger rear corner now to address, which is obviously in and out of wheel, it's in and out of sills. If anyone knows EKs, they know where they go. So we're... Uh, We've pretty much got to do that when we get back after Christmas. And no rust on my AK, mate. No, no, definitely not. Mm -hmm. um, and we've Mine's just got to, fine. we've completely cleaned the floor pans of all under seal. We've got a little bit around the boot floor to do. Uh, pretty much got to finish that last little bit of metal work. Then the underside could get shot blasted. The engine bay could get shot blasted. And then I think we're sort of into the bodywork stages. So the first two videos that you're going to see are definitely going to be the roof. I'm going to try and get that one edited over Christmas. That'll be the first one back in the new year. Uh, and also, I'll start on the panel work one, but with that one, we get completely when we get back. I've got a brown coat. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit rusty. It's a bit rusty. It's getting rustier. It's been here for years. Yeah. Well, to touch on Dan's brown coat. I mean, we'll touch on projects then. I think that's where we are. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, we'll touch our projects. Dan's Brown Colt. Uh, that's a 1980s Colt. That's as old as me and Rich. It is as old as me and Dan. 26. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do the maths. The maths is a bit off. The maths is a bit off. <laughs> um, yeah, so to be fair, we started that shop before we started the YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, a lot of that, a lot of that, did. yeah, a lot of that hasn't been covered. Um, but we will get back into it. We are, I would say that job is about... 80% complete. So that's a 1980s retro Mitsubishi Colt in brown with a D15. No, it's a D14. D14 engine. Yeah, D Honda. Yeah, Honda D14 engine. The reason that we went down that route was the original engine was like 60 horsepower. And carburetor. And carburetor. And obviously we've gone for the D14 because um, no one really wants them. Plus also, to be honest, at the time when we bought that car, we bought an MV uh, chassis with the D14 it with 22,000 original miles on it. And we paid 550 quid for it, didn't we? We about um, got that for the cat. and Yeah, we about got that back for the cat. We both sort of needed parts of it. I wanted the subframe and uh, sort of a clutch pedal and a few bits that I needed for a job that I was doing. Uh, and Dan wanted the engine and stuff out of it for what he was doing. Uh, I've, the engine's fitted in the car, it's in there. The drive shafts are made. Uh, they need welding, that's the only thing they need. Uh, the wiring loom was completely thinned out and already done. Um, 
realistically, we were only, I think the exhaust was even mocked up. Yeah. The exhaust was already mocked up. Got it got nice had, had it been it. finely welded. Uh, yeah, literally, I reckon if I had a couple of weeks of that car, I could finish it. It's where I am. But the engine bay wanted painting and I needed to finish mock up. Um, Jason was working with us at the time, so I had a little bit of spare time, so I was doing that in my spare time. Jason left and we had a period of time on our own before Jensen started and then obviously been training Jensen, we started the paint shop. I know it sounds like an excuse when you talk about there's four year gap there. No one's ever got time to work on their own car. No one's ever got time to work on their own car. But the difficulty is when you have a member of staff who's freed up a little bit of time and that's when you were doing it in, in your spare time to do that project. They leave, you spend 12 months on your own, you, you take Jensen on, he's learning, you start a paint shop. I'm learning. It just didn't, uh, yeah, it didn't, that job didn't get finished. It didn't get forgotten, it just didn't get finished. Uh, so that's definitely a job for next year. Once this EK is at a point when it's out of here and it's in the paint shop, that'll be coming back in. But I think where I'm going to concentrate first is Dan's uh, Colt. The Revan. The, yeah, the reason I'm going to do that is all that needs is a couple of bits that we've pilfered from You've it, which is just like I have got my yeah. air intake temp sensors and uh, a boost solder I think is missing from it. It wants a good general check over and a tidy up. Uh, we'll get a full service, won't we? Yeah, the, uh, the, basically what happened is the clutch master cylinder blue, which was the original Colt one, uh, and it basically got parked. For those who don't know, we're talking about a K-Swap Turbo Mitsubishi Colt. Yeah, um, CZT. Literally, CZT. It's literally been parked outside for a little while because I think the engine's got to come back out to do that job, ain't it? To do what? The master cylinder. No, I think we could probably work around it, but we'll have to see. I don't know exactly, but I think we could probably work around it. But what I'm saying is, We've got to move forward with that. I mean, Jensen's been here now, 18, yeah. a year, and a, been here? year and a half, year and a half, year and a half, and he's never heard it run. He's never heard it run. He's never heard it run. So it's that's something that, ain't it? Yeah, so <laughs> something, that, something we've definitely got to do is that's, once, basically once the EK's around the paint shop, that's my first job of the year. Get the clutch in it, get it running, get the ECU back in it. Obviously, we'll do a map on it, we'll do a map revision on it. Because um, to be honest, the ECU's been out of the car more than it's been in it because we use it as the K Pro we use when we're tuning the K100s. It's over there. That was it. Yeah, uh, yeah it's K Pro we use for that. So we want to get that back in and obviously running, uh, get that car back up and running. To be honest, it, it's a red one and it's faded badly. Sitting outside in the sun didn't help it. Um, it's either going to be a spray wrap or it'll be a complete paint job on that car. So again, that's another one that's going to go for that side. I want to get. Something that I want to do is I want to get this EK up and running. Parts of paint, isn't it? Mm. it yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The chances of me ever parting with that car are highly likely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I say, we're going to... it is. We're going to get, the, yeah, we're going to get the EK Brown. up and running. I want to get the Colt back up and running because something that we want to do next year as well is we want to do more shows. We've come away from shows. But we even had a conversation today that Jackfest for April is already sold out, which is craziness to me. We've not even thought about shows yet because we're still building the cars. Um, so we'd be want to be like, say, two weeks away or a month away and then decide, that, OK, we're going to book that and book a club stand and go. I don't know whether those times have gone. Maybe I'm an old dinosaur or what. I don't know. But that's it's how a shame it's... we're not the UK's number one Honda tuner. Yeah. So we can just get straight in through the gate and everything. Yeah, yeah. But we, uh, yeah, I don't know whether we, uh, I'm going to laugh about that. The, uh, yeah, I don't know whether we're, I don't know whether Do you know who I am? Yeah. Do you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> But people, I'm sure people will comment. I don't know whether this is a new way that yeah. it is for shows. You have to book them four months or six months in advance. I don't know. But it just seems strange to me that we're over four months away from that show and that show's already sold out. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether that's going to continue for the rest of the year. We won't, might not make any shows because we're, you know, we're not going to book them up that far in advance. But we'll just have to see on that one. But yeah, I'd love to get the EK up and running and done and, and certainly Dan's Colt up and done as two show pieces for what the paint shop could do and what we could do here. Um, then moving on, it's definitely going to be the brown coal. Uh, I think the initial stage for the brown coal is get it up and running with the engine in it. Um, we won't necessarily go to paint on that, I don't think. I I'll be happy to drive that around as it is for a bit. Yeah, so I think that's just get it up and running. You know, do the shakedown in it. Yeah, get that up and running. I think next up for me, uh, personally, of my car run, is uh, the EG needs just a little bit of love just to get it back up to 100%. So I definitely need to do that. I want to get supercharged pulley up and running. I definitely want to do some track days in that car this year. So for me, that's the next one to get done. What about the E9? I think that's going to be like next winter's project. I don't think that's going to get done this year. Yeah, Come in. I don't know whether they yeah. next year, we, we did a video where we collected the E9. I think I think we did, we've we seen did it since. No, we did a big video when we collected it. Um, that I'll also, drop that video. That's when the page up's yeah, empty, isn't it? Yeah, it was page, we got the page yeah. up, it was empty. Yeah. I want to get 
For the E9, I want to get that. I want to get that stripped, and I want to get it on the rotisserie. So again, it needs some love, and, it, and it's going to get it, but it's not going to happen. I think the main thing is let's get stuff that's either so close to being done, or stuff that's getting done, like the EK yeah. at the moment, get out done. I think the E9 would be like next Christmas's project in the sense of like getting it on there, getting it welded up for Christmas, and it'll go through the paint shop at Christmas again. Um, and get that ready for the following year would be sort of nice. I think the EG doesn't need a massive amount. Some repairs on the arches a little bit, which is typical, obviously, yeah. uh, and then a clean up. And uh, Keith's car's already had paint this year, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Keith's oh. car's painted. Jello car, Jello's has just had a, an energy conversion. Yeah, what you had, Jello? I've had a PD 130 swap from a 105 and a hybrid turbo, all of the supporting mods for that. What sort of power are you in? At the moment, 230. Yeah, rookie numbers. numbers. Power rookie numbers. Well, it's coming, getting a new set of injectors in the new year. Oh. We're going with, going Is it on low boost at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Low, low boost, boost, yeah. <laughs> low boost. No, I think the way, where we were with it is. Uh, We've had uh, PD parts have, uh, have done the conversion Damn. basically. Uh, PD parts, uh, yeah. He's also tuned. He's also tuned, tuned it for us. Uh, come here and tuned it for us. So shout out to him for uh, putting up with us and coming out and, uh, and tuned it. <laughs> he's a good lad. I hope he's smoking many cigars this Christmas. Yeah. So he come out and tuned it, and we sort of we were expecting. I think well, I wasn't expecting anything because I don't know PDs, but he was telling us it should make around two fifty. Um, at around 400 foot powers of torque. And we're bang on on the torque, but a little bit down the brake horsepower. He's pretty convinced that he might have a slightly weak injector. Um, so he's got to come back out in the new year with a, with a, with a new set. And uh, he's got to hopefully going to tweak it for the 250. Uh, yeah, amazing daily. Yeah, I think something we want to do. It sounds great. It's, ma it's made me enjoy that car again, because I was a bit like, I sort of don't want it anymore. I want to get like a automatic BMW or something. Mm. It might be a bit nice, a bit driving that now. I'm like, no, I want to. Sounds wanna great, mate. Sounds it. absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I love it. I do really enjoy driving it now. Yeah, I think so. What we've got to do early on next year is like get a little track day booked, even if that's at Mallory or something. Like Keith's got his Colt, we've got that. I've, to be honest, I wouldn't even be too bothered about running the little Red EP3 and just going and running that round for a That'd few laps. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, go and run that round for a few laps. I'll take the FN2. Yeah, it'd be nice to. I think it's something that we'll. You've got an FN2. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I have got an FNT. Yeah, I've got a Chad White FNT. Yeah, and that's, that happened this year, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I think we're just going. I think we're just going to be in a situation. Basically, that was this year. Yeah, yeah. I've binned it this year, didn't I? Yeah, you binned it this year. We repaired it. You got a uh, black uh, Colt, black Colt, black Mitsubishi something. That's an Evo. Yeah, Jensen. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I have got an Evo. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks, Jensen. So that I started it yesterday. <laughs> I moved it and still stole it. Yeah, yeah. stole it. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got an FO2. That's something that did happen this year that, that was pretty depressing, actually. I v teched through a Master 2. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the Master 2 v well, went into you. You didn't v tech through it. No, no, it definitely pulled out into my yeah. it's right of way and I yeah. spun her back into oncoming traffic. Yeah. It wasn't the nicest of moments for me, but thankfully, with this team on hand, it's better than ever. It's actually better than ever it's got tires and everything now hasn't yeah, it yeah it has yeah <laughs> but fully it's fully mint now and i love it again yeah. um i have i think i need uh, the tegua um what are they collars for the subframe sub -frame collars yeah i think that's it and then um, that's something to look at early in the new year for us yeah, as well eh? like yeah. you said you've got a little clicking noise on the front so we want to have a look at that um, see if we obviously just generally have a look at that and that car's sort of ready again isn't it? Mm. so it's like I'd say we, I know we're sort of talking about our own projects here obviously there's going to be a lot of customer work in between that these things that's, are really getting that's done. why we do these videos <laughs> because we like to look back at last year's and see, see how much of it we didn't get done yeah how much of it we didn't do yeah for sure um, and the Supra but that's right yeah though, that's is... once that needs the turbo taken off and reconditioning to be fair out of all the build that i did on that i, I used a, a turbo that i'd already previously purchased for another project uh, and it had been on another car it was of mine. Civic, wasn't it? yeah it'd been on another thing and i kept it and shelved it and it went on and it was it seemed like it was fine did start getting a little bit of blue smoke which i can't handle so it sort of got parked up and the, and the turbo needs to come off i think that's going to get That'll be coming off soon and then get that sent off. So to be fair, goes, if yeah. our YouTube channel was only our content, there's plenty to do. In yeah, there. there's loads to do. I mean, but we'll have, cust we'll have customer content next year. I'm sure we're going to map a lot of EP3s on the ECU exchanges that we always do. Yeah. We're going to map a lot of FN2s uh, on the Ecotech software. We're going to bolt on a lot of parts to a lot of cars and we're going to enjoy ourselves whilst we do it. I think so. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's basically the plan, ain't it?
Do some yeah. spray wraps. Do some spray, spray wraps. wraps. Yeah, yeah. We've got some stuff wraps, booked in. We've already got stuff booked in for January. We've got a uh, a supercharger to build on an FN2 and then map. We've got an EP3 that is supercharged that needs some injectors and a map. So there's some real cool stuff already booked in for January. Yeah, which is nice. It's nice to be in a situation where there's stuff already coming in. Um, like I say, with Keith's paint shop, I think we've already got a couple of little jobs booked in there. We have. Um, yeah. Uh, I think there's a van and there's something else so there's a couple of little jobs obviously the EK will be going through there so that'll be a video series in the paint shop um, you know to get us through this sort of quiet part of the start of the year as I would put it uh, hopefully we sort of hit the ground running and uh, yeah so uh, everything progresses nicely throughout the year yeah well I think that I think that's pretty much it for our year so whatever it is that you guys are doing over this particular period of holiday, you stay safe, stay warm. I hope Santa brings you what you've asked for. And um, yeah, I think we'll see you all in the new year, won't we? We will, we certainly will. Socks and pants, lads. Socks. Yeah, socks and pants. <laughs> Don't worry, it's only three, <laughs> three days down, you have those new socks and pants. Well, it'll be today, they'd have already opened you, you, you Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Get them. them on, get them on. Yeah. yeah, if anyone got anything cool for Christmas, Send us a message on Facebook. Yeah. Right, peace out. Right. That's it, innit? See you in the new year. Thanks very much for supporting us and following our YouTube channel and for all your business this year. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Well, as it's Christmas, we're going for breakfast. <laughs> we're, going in, we're going in this beauty. I might have a bit of a, I might have a, bit of a sleep whilst I'm in it. But uh, yeah, I've never been. I've never been in an outing in this. Apparently, I was supposed to be down there with my seatbelt on, but I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna be fine. So we're off to the harvester, I believe. Um, oh, it's actually a bit more pokey than I thought it was gonna be. Right, we'll check. Whoa, we'll check back in in a bit. Well, we have arrived at our first destination. <laughs> the travel lodge. The travel lodge, yeah. Thankfully, there's some disabled parking that Richard just put a massive van in. So that's great. Right, let's go eat. Now, we've all got to meet back here. So have you, <laughs> so if you, get have lost. you, have you got your high-vis vest? <laughs> if you get lost. Wait, it was pretty fast.